Hey friends, so one of the most common questions that I'm talking with in NND teams and other teams is where can AI help you at work? Now, for most of us and for most people's interactions with tools, they are committing the sin of what I call as going to the tool first versus defining a problem. Now, I totally understand with a transformational technology like generative AI, Everyone wants to get involved and try stuff out. And that's great. One of the greatest ways to find out how you can use these tools is through experimentation. But what we can do is put a decision-making framework on that and give you some examples from my own world to help you look at where potentially can AI tools help you in your work so you can save time, you can do better quality work, and you can focus on more human things that matter. So let's break this down. And I think this all starts with looking at your tasks. Each of our, whatever you want to call them, jobs, roles are built up of tasks. We use skills to complete those tasks. There are a variety of tasks in what we do, and some take more time than others. They're more troublesome. So we need to pay more attention. With particular AI tools, they can help us in some of these verticals that we talk about. So when I talk about tasks, I am looking specifically at kind of these three categories here. So what are the tasks that take a lot of time and maybe produce minimal output for you? Or they take more time than they should do, really. What is the effort involved in that? And then what is the output you get from that task. So what does that task enable you to do? And I'll give you three examples here for my own world and where I think about these tasks and some tools that can help me and why they can help me. The first one is what I call discovery sessions, which is basically meetings. So I am very lucky to spend a, a great deal of my week with many different teams and many different people talking about how we can help them with problems that they're facing, either from a tech perspective and as you can imagine, specifically from an AI perspective right now. In my own industry or the industry that I've worked in quite a lot in learning and development, a lot of teams and people are looking at just content creation only with AI. And hopefully this will give you a view of what else you can do from a task perspective with these tools that is also going to help you to focus on whatever problems you're trying to solve and also produce a better outcome. So with these discovery sessions, you know, I'll have probably meetings anywhere ranging from 15 minutes to 45 minutes talking about projects with clients, talking to individuals about some of the things that they're facing. Now, like all good things, I like to focus on the conversations. I'm kind of writing notes on the side of my notepad or on a docs file, but they're not always clear. They're little snippets. I want to really be involved in that conversation. What I like to do is deploy an AI meeting assistant to join a call, to record the transcript, summarize that transcript, and give me all of the key takeaways. Now, that might sound really simple, but boring and basic is very sexy in my opinion, because it's efficient. This can do is help me save hours in trawling through transcripts, if I've got that. It also gives me the key insights that I need to know or the key actions. So when I am potentially working on client projects for weeks or months, I can go back to those conversations instead of going back to a bunch of really quick handwritten notes and trying to figure out, hmm, what did we talk about there? So it gives me this nice structure to my meetings so I can focus on those human conversations, but still get all the insights and key takeaways that I need. So from a tool perspective, you know, there's loads of tools out there that you can kind of play around with. A few that I would recommend investigating is Read AI, Sana in part of their AI platform also provides the functionality to connect into any of your calendars and meetings and record transcripts and give you highlights and insights as well. And a new tool that I've been trying out called Granona. Any of those that you can use, you might already have something at your organization. The caveat to this is of course, make sure any tool you use for work is approved by your organization. So if you're using Microsoft architecture, you can probably use this through Teams or Copilot. They have the functionality there to record transcripts and give you insights. You could also do this from a Google perspective. So Google Workspace provides this as well. But something like this can really save you not only lots of hours, but 
it can also help you be more efficient in your communications, be clear on what everyone is working on and get those kind of key insights that you might have missed if you're just trying to write everything down all the time. So that's what I look at as a very useful outcome of using AI. So our second one is reports and research. So in some way, for most people, we're probably looking at articles. We may be looking at huge reports. Someone like me is looking at 250 page reports and research papers sometimes. And actually we haven't got the time to read all of that. But what we want to do is make sure that we're synthesizing the best information and effectively acting as a our own version of a Harvard Business Review. So we get the key insights, we know what actions we need to take, and then we can keep going back to that. So a couple of tools that I really like for this is Notebook LM. Some people might be aware of that. I have a separate video as a how-to guide of Notebook LM, which you can take a look if you're interested, but essentially allows you to upload loads of different documents, analyze those together, ask your questions, get key insights, get summaries, you can do this as well with most of the basic large language model tools. So Google Gemini, ChatGPT. This is just a really efficient way if one, you want to get a very quick kind of overview and analysis of a particular piece of research or a report to make sure it's worth your time to dive in deeper with a human analysis. This is not about replacing your own critical thinking at all or judgment on what's useful in this type of content. This is really all around that how can you get that first layer of understanding? What is this thing? Why is it important? And how could it help me? And tools like this can definitely help you do that. It can give you that summarization and they can kind of give you that assessment of, yep, yeah, this is worth your time or no, you know, chuck that out. So I find that incredibly useful. And that's one of my biggest tasks is reports and research. So that probably eats up something like 10 hours a week for me, maybe more than that. And then my final one, but definitely not limited to this, this example is data analysis. We are all interacting with data at some kind of level. You know, not everyone is going to be an analyst and fantastic at that. But again, there's great use cases here for tools like ChatGPT, Claude, Copilot, and all of these tools that you see sitting here that can really help you with crunching down what is this data you've got? How can you use it? What are the key insights and what are the actions you can take from that? Now, there's many examples of this from a sales world. You could be looking at how much your product is selling, how people are interacting with that product and analyzing that from a marketing perspective. You can be looking at content performance across all of your channels. And then from a perspective in kind of my world with LND and HR teams, for HR teams, you could be looking at employee survey forms. You could be looking at feedback from new kind of processes that you're putting out from an LND perspective. This could be from workshop feedback or program feedback, or even testing on different bits of technology. There's a lot of opportunity here to use these tools to not only analyze that data, but even think critically with that data alongside AI. And what I mean by that is using AI to help you think more broad, should I say, or diverse in terms of what are things you might have missed? What are your blind spots? What are other things that you could potentially consider and all of that data that you have got. So look, that is just an overview in terms of if you're sitting there thinking around, you know, I'd really love to start using some AI tools, but I'm not sure where. Look at your tasks and of course, look at the problems you're trying to solve. On a personal level, tasks are going to be the biggest thing. So what are those things that you are doing potentially day in, day out, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, that you could not automate, but you could get support on in part of that process and help you to get to better outcomes and spend your time more wisely. Because we go back to before, what we want to look at our tasks are what is taking the most time, what is taking the most effort, and actually the importance of that output. And the main thing is we could control these variables of time and effort with some of these tasks and some of these tools to generate a better output. So in sum, that is a little bit of a decision-making framework you can use when you're thinking around how could I potentially adopt AI in my own workflow to help me, as the popular saying is, work smarter. And I think this is one of the ways to do that. So look, as always, I hope that's helpful. Any questions, ask those in the chat and I will speak to you in the next one.